So, Daniel, all of these are different companies, but certainly tech is a common theme. What do they have in common aside from tech? Well, Emily, I think if you look at some of the companies that disappointed today, there are some very specific stories, like, for example, with Hewlett Packard, where people are worried about the printing supplies growth and printing supplies contributes an outsized percentage of the profit. If we look at uh, Booking or Box or Fitbit, ultimately those are concerns around competition and the need to invest to help differentiate. But if we step back and think about what's going on in technology, a lot of the key secular trends remain healthy. The move to the cloud, really the digitization, if you will, of society. So we see a lot of opportunities, even with some of the macro headwinds. So for example, we would highlight Cisco, which is a leader in networking that's really transformed its mix towards more software and services. And we think margins and earnings will be better than the market expects. Another name we like is Motorola Solutions, which is a leader in public safety. And they're pivoting to faster growth areas like video. They have an excellent management team that's been able to execute on transitioning the company to newer areas and expand margins. Another name we like is Alphabet. We think the core search business is healthy. YouTube has very strong growth. And newer areas like the Google Cloud platform are somewhat underappreciated. And then longer term, they have opportunities in areas like autonomous driving with Waymo. And the, the other one we would highlight is Apple, where we think the strength of the ecosystem is underappreciated. While sure, there are concerns about the iPhone and China, the install base is growing, user satisfaction is high, and they're doing a good job in newer areas like services and wearables. And the wearables, I, I would say, helps demonstrate that innovation is still alive and well. So we expect the environment to remain choppy. The macro obviously is going to be a focus for some time, and none of these companies have great visibility. But those that are able to innovate and differentiate with products and services, we think can create additional shareholder value over the next one to two years. So, Shira, some names we talk about there on the show all the time, Apple, Alphabet, but some other names that we don't hear very often, you know, along with, you know, HP Inc., Box, uh, Fitbit, as we're discussing today. How does what's happening with them fit into what's happening with big tech? Yeah, I mean, Dan's point, uh, I think, was right about there's this general secular shift towards cloud technology. But what that's meant is that there are a handful of high growth cloud software companies, names like Workday and Viva Systems and Salesforce and Atlassian. And they've had really impressive stock price run-ups, even accounting for the dip in stock market prices around September, October last year. And what that's meant is that now those stocks are looking pretty expensive relative to themselves and relative to the overall stock market. And, you know, the piece I wrote today was basically saying, look, the growth rates are coming down for those high growth um, software companies and the multiples of revenue, their valuations are going up. And so that sets them up for a crater if and when there's any kind of hiccups in performance or the macro environment. Dan, I'm curious for your outlook on some of the big tech names that you didn't mention. Of course, you talked about Apple, you talked about Alphabet, but what about the others? Of course, we know Facebook has struggled. Uh, Netflix is, is certainly in a unique position. Sure, Emily. So we like Facebook, and while we think there's a lot of work that they need to do around data, security, privacy, I think the company, the management team is uh, appreciating the severity of the situation, and we're seeing a greater willingness to change and try and uh, improve the health of the platform. What's interesting there is, despite all of that, the metrics of the underlying business remain healthy. And if we look at some of the other uh, platforms underneath the Facebook umbrella, you've got Instagram, which is showing very strong growth. You have newer, uh, newer properties like WhatsApp and Messenger that we think could be increasingly monetized uh, over time. So with the core Facebook, you do have this transition to stories, and it will take time. But the, the results to date and the outlook suggest that there is quite attractive growth. Shifting to Netflix, what we think is interesting here is that the company is continued to push ahead with differentiated and unique content, and they've coupled that with a direct relationship with their users. And so they're helping to really redefine the television experience. And so 
all, all of these companies, there is execution risk, sure, there's competition, but we think they're very interesting. Another name we would point out that we continue to like is Amazon. And the reason Amazon remains interesting in our view is they're executing well in their core e-commerce business, but they're doing a terrific job with the Amazon uh, web services. And when we speak to customers, to buyers, this shift to the cloud is really very much in its infancy, and we think that they're going to have attractive growth for several years to come there. And the last piece we would emphasize with Amazon is that they have an advertising business, which is smaller, it's growing quickly, it's accretive to margins, and we think that's somewhat underappreciated. And so pulling this all together, the key trends around cloud, mobile, social, they're, they're not without complications, certainly in terms of the social elements and, and data and privacy, and we do think more regulation is necessary. But if these companies can invest appropriately and continue to innovate, then we think there's additional value to be created. And more regulation could be coming, especially with the FTC forming a new task force to look at past acquisitions even. Speaking of the cloud year, you've got a piece out today titled Forget Fang, Stock bu Bubble Could Be in the Cloud. Explain. Yeah, and it's it's really, again, about looking at how expensive those cloud stacks have gotten relative to their expected revenue over the next year. I came up with the, um, I apologize for this acronym, I came up with the fake acronym PUTINS for uh, those to describe those stocks, because every grouping of stocks needs its own acronym these days. And, you know, I looked at basically the median multiple, right? So how much are investors paying for each dollar of future revenue? And all 17 of this kind of grouping of cloud companies that I looked at, they're all trading above their two-year multiple average. And again, that implies that the expectations are now very high for those cloud software companies like Atlassian and Workday and Salesforce and so on to deliver on the growth promises. And if they don't, we might see the kind of stock craterings that we see periodically from these high growth, uh, high expectation kind of cloud companies.